All right, this is my simple guide to series and parallel stubbing. Uh, we'll be going over this quickly and then explaining the details in depth later. Uh, to start with, we're going to start out with a load of 30 ohms at plus J30, so inductive reactants of 30 ohms, with a Z050. So first we're going to need to normalize this by dividing each term by 30, which gives us 0.6 ohms plus J.6. So to find that point, we follow the real line until we get to 0.6 here. Sorry if that's a little bit blurry, I'll have a uh, PDF in the links below. And then I trace up the inductive line until I find where 0.6 intersects with the 0.6 inductive reactance line. As you can see those numbers right there. And I put a little point there. This is my Zn, or my normalized load. Now I need to take and draw in my SWR circle, add more on that later, with a compass. So let's get this guy set. Alright, line up so that point goes straight through there. So that passes through the line from the center and uh, follows around perfectly. Alright, now I'm going to draw my normalized line from the center through Zn out to the edge. And now I need two lines that show where the SW or where the um, 50 ohm line, which is this line that goes through the center of the spec chart, intersects with the SWR, which is right here and right here. Now I'm going to take and draw these two lines out from there. Okay. So, for series stubbing, we carry about the Zn side of that normalized line. To find the distance in wavelengths, we need to go from this line here to the first one of these lines it intersects, which is this one. And we are using the wavelengths towards generator, so you see the arrow in this outer circle goes there. and that gives us the wavelengths between the two. So I have this guy at, we'll call it 0.16, and this guy here is at 0.18. Alright, let's see here, 0.16, point, no, not 0.18, 0.108. So my arc distance there is 0.16 minus 0.108 gives me 0 0.052 wavelengths is my distance to the stub. Okay, so the next thing we need to know is the length of the stub. And in order to do that, we need to find out this line here this is our stub, we need to find out what the reactance is that we need to cancel out. So to do that, we follow from this point out to the edge, right here, and now we need to find that on the bottom, and that looks about like 0.925. So we go down to the bottom and find the same point draw a line from the center to this point. Okay. Now, to find the length of the stub, we need to move back 
towards the load, which is the circle on the inside here. This inner track, sorry, this second innermost circle. So we've got two kinds of series stubbing we can do. We can do a shorted stub and an open stub. So to tell where the shorted stub is and the open stub is, we need to look at the resistance here, this uh, real resistance line. Now this end of it is infinite, insistent, uh, infinite impedance, which is an open. So if we want an open on our series, we need to go from this line to here in wavelengths. So that would be 0.122 to 0.25. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not 0 0.112, that's 0.118. gives me a wavelength of 0.132. So that's subtracting this point from this point. Okay, so that's for an open. If we wanted a, sh a short, well, the this side of the real line is the equivalent of a short. So for a series, if we're going for a short, we need to come the rest of the way over here and a quick trick, this is one half of this arc is 0.25 wavelengths. So if you add 0.25 to 0.132, that is what you should get for the series uh, stub, for a short series stub and an open series stub. I've got a little program here that will double check this for me. in my stuff. for the open circuit stub and for that you can see hmm I get rid of some glare here I'll update that later it gives me a length of 0 0.131 which is close to the 0.132 and a distance of 0 0.053, which is really close to 0 0.052. Let's see if I can get that any clearer. Grab my little anti glare sheet. Hmm. No luck, I will add that up in the uh, updates. Okay. So, next, let me clear this up a little bit and we'll go after the series stub. I'm sorry, the parallel stops. So for series, recap, draw your ZN, draw these two lines, go from there to there, that's your distance of the stub, and then find the reactants, find that same point, and from there to here is open, and from there to here is short. Okay, now let me clear this up a bit so that we can go after the uh, parallel stops. And you may notice I used a uh, alcohol-based marker and laminated sheet so I can dry erase this and do it multiple times without wasting a lot of paper. You can do this with normal dry erase, but the alcohol erase stays better and doesn't smudge as much while you're working. It does leave a pretty, you know, mark on the table though. All right, let's put my marks back in. We got 0.66 ZN. Draw the same SWR circle. Now 
and we're just going to use the same load and uh, impedance because, you know, why waste time? Okay, make sure that that point is the exact point. Point six, point six. Excellent. Okay. So the first main difference, instead of going through my normalized line, I could draw the whole thing in, but for clarity's sake, I'm just going to go for the admittance line. So if I go through that ZN out here, this point here where it crosses that is my admittance YN, my normalized admittance. Okay. So for parallel, we care about this line. All right, so once again, find the same two points that where the 50 ohm line intersects things. And draw these lights. Alright, so once again, for the distance, we go from YN towards the generator all the way until it intersects the first one of these lines. So this is our distance to the sub, our new distance to the sub. It's a little bit trickier to add up, but we're just counting the wavelengths around here. So. From here we have 0 to 0 0.158, 0 0.158, and then here we have 0 0.158, you can either add it up by subtract, subtracting this value from 0.25, which is probably the easiest, so we'll go with that. So we have 0 0.3 0.356 we'll call this And this over here would be 0.5. This point is 0.5. So 0.5 minus 0.356 plus the 0.158 gives us a distance sub of 0 0.302 wavelengths. Okay, now once again, we have to find the reactants at this point, and if you recall from the last one, it is about 0.925 or so. So we come back to the same point here, we draw our line, I'll use a different color to make this more clear. Okay. Now, for admittance, when we're going for the open stub and the sort stub, we're still going to go this way. But because admittance is flipped, this here, which is an open for uh, a series stub, is going to be a short for a parallel stub. So if I go from here to here, that will give me my. Uh, my shorted parallel stub and if I continue on all the way over to here that will give me my open parallel stub 
And I'll just run some numbers on this real quick. 0.25 minus... Um, 0.118. So I got a length for a shorted of 0.132. And I will check that real quick on my calculator. Okay, so I'm going to parallel short circuit stub it to make sure that it adds up. And the distance I get, or my length, I get 0 0.131, which matches up my 0 0.132 here. And for my distance, I get 0 0.302, so right on there. Let's see if I can show you that on here. There we go. So anyhow, that's how you do series and parallel stubs. Uh, I can get a little confusing at first, but just remember, uh, if you're going for series stubs, go from your Z normalized line to the first one of these that it encounters, that's your distance, find your reactants, and this is the reactance of the stub at that point, so you have to cancel that out by coming down here and following the toward the load line, which is the inner of the two circles, to here. And for series, this would be open, uh, and for parallel, it will be short. So just remember that series, this is open, this side's the opposite of that. And then for admittance, flip the two. And then if you're doing a parallel stubs, remember you go from your YN line, and you track uh, your YN line all the way to its first intersection, and that's your distance to the stub. And then you find the reactance of that, find the same point, and go here, and as before, you know, shorts and stubs. So that's really all there is to the parallel stubbing. Um, there are some neat things to explain about a Smith chart. This Z normalized here, uh, using the SWR line to find the same circle, uh, find the same point on the opposite side of that, and get your admittance, that's great. Um, I may do another video. Uh, briefly talking about the directions on the Smith chart, but uh, I'll just cover in short here. If you're going up on the Smith chart, it's inductive. If you're going down, it's capacitive. And if you're going, yeah, I'll leave that for another video. All right, thank you. And if you have any questions on that, check out the PDF in the links. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.